Uh, hello everyone and uh, good afternoon to all of us. Thank you all for joining our call. And uh, today uh, we, are, we are happy to have uh, Mike Kebaso. Uh, he's a senior cyber sec at iSolution. And he'll be talking to us about AWS security. Uh, hi, Mark. Mike. Hope hi, hi, Adam. Yeah, I yes. can get you clearly. Hi, everyone. You can pick it from here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adeline. So once again, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Basso. I'm a security engineer here at iSolutions Associates. Uh, iSolutions Associates is a, a, a company specializing in uh, security solutions, offering end-to-end -end solutions right from identity and access management to uh, web application protection, API security, uh, data leakage protection, network security, you know, all the way to endpoint security. So uh, we have a vast portfolio of uh, solutions that now uh, uh, integrate into customer environments and uh, provide more a robust uh, security um, protection in terms of uh, 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 cyber security and um, co malware control, incident management, and such kind of uh, cyber security activities. Uh, so thank you for joining today. Um, uh, the topic today we are going to discuss majorly around uh, cloud uh, security. As, as, as we all know, the, the the major thing that um, malicious actors are looking to get to is the data that is sitting in the in the, in the backend. Whether this information is hosted in the cloud or uh, it's hosted somewhere on prem, right? Remember, the cloud is just another person's data center, right? So that that means even data that is hosted in the private clouds that is uh, sitting uh, uh, in in on prem uh, data centers, that means this data also needs to be protected just like data that is sitting in the cloud, right? Remember the introduction of cloud, there is both uh, private, public, and uh, hybrid cloud. For the public cloud, are the, are the cloud environments, uh, including AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and the likes. As, and, and, and then uh, there's the private uh, cloud, whereby now we have, um, we have, uh, 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 customers running their own workloads in their ecosystems within their premise, and they actually have their own data centers hosting their workloads within the environment. So the hybrid setup comes whereby you now merge the two setups, right? The, the, the public cloud versus the, the private cloud and sort of have uh, or experience both of uh, uh, the best of these solutions, right? So uh, with, without saying much, uh, can you allow me to share my screen so that now we can just begin to look at what is happening uh, inside um, the world of uh, cybersecurity as well as what is actually happening and what we can do in terms of mitigating a malicious access to our data, which is the critical point uh, sitting in, 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 in the backend. So uh, just to start over, uh, just like I was saying earlier, uh, my name is Mike Kebaso for uh, the team that has joined and uh, we were still doing the introductions. Um, and a uh, security engineer here at iSolutions uh, specializing in application and data security. So um, uh, previously, uh, just uh, years back, uh, there was no much information that uh, or data that probably was being generated by users as well as um, uh, devices uh, all over the world. And, and that means that um, most of the world data began uh, uh, being produced over the span of uh, just about 10 years ago, right? As, 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 as you can see from the statistics, you can see that uh, in the year 2008, uh, we had a very uh, uh, rather uh, small amount of data that was being produced by uh, actually users as well as uh, devices. And some of these you find uh, most of them are from major uh, uh, 
uh, uh, major organizations such as Google that were processing an exabytes of uh, data as early as 2008. So, uh, with the increase of um, uh, uh, digital transformation, these drivers that now caused a huge increase in the data, including uh, digital transformation, um, internet of things, bring your own device, and uh, compliance regulations, we've had a major increase in, 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 in the data that is being produced um, uh, and being consumed actually by users as well as devices. So you, 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 you can see from uh, the graph there was a, a gradual increase of the data from uh, the year 2008 uh, all the way to the projected years of 2024 and 2025. As you can see, there's a projection of an estimated 149 zettabytes, right? Which is 149,000 exabytes of data that is actually um, expected to be, to be produced by next year. Actually, we are sitting on this right now because even if you do your research and uh, look for this information online, you'll see that the current uh, amount of data that is being produced, even from the charts, you can see that it is almost uh, same as what has been projected to be uh, uh, produced in the next year or so. So uh, with the growth of data, that means that there's an increased attack surface, right? The, the more the data, the more uh, malicious actors want to get to it because remember, uh, data is the new oil, right? Data is being used all over for AI training, for um, uh, 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 risk, risk assessment and, and portfolio management. There's a lot of use cases for the data that is being produced right now. And that is why we're able to even have the large language models such as uh, ChatGPT, uh, Google Clouds, BAD, and, and, and the likes of large language models, which are being trained on billions and billions of parameters. Why? Because this information is available. And right now it can be consumed in different ways, in different manners and be used for different um, uh, activities, including uh, model, model training, uh, risk assessments. Uh, uh, and even in, in fact, in cybersecurity, data has played a critical role in terms of identifying uh, malicious actors, right? Most of the solutions in cybersecurity work on, on the basis of signatures, right? These signatures are what have been collected from malware that was identified previously existing and was found existing in user environments that have been compromised by uh, malicious actors, right? So this data is what has been used to train the models that are now being used and fitted into uh, uh, current modern solutions that now incorporate machine learning and the likes of uh, behavioral analytics that now use advanced uh, machine learning to be able to identify uh, uh, attacks and, and um, malicious activity that are taking place in our environments. So without um, uh, we, we, having said that, with uh, much of data being produced to the extent whereby now uh, you find that most organizations cannot handle the amount of information that they produce, right? Uh, 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 take, take a use case, for instance, the healthcare industry, right? There's, there's been huge growth of data from the healthcare industry and and by that uh, uh by default that means a growth in the storage capacity right as it is right now not so many organizations have the capacity to be able to handle these kinds zettabytes of of, of data that probably they might be either producing or consuming right because as 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 much as the data is being produced then it also means that this information is also being consumed by other other users, such as uh, the uh, model trainers and um, uh, uh, other kinds of risk assessment um, uh, players in the industry who may want to use this information to model how they operate and build a, a portfolio out of their users. So it is really critical that now we understand uh, how this data came came about, the huge volumes that now drove uh, they move the shift to cloud, right? With organizations, with organizations unable to handle this information on their premise and uh, without having the capacity to handle this information, it gave rise to uh, the cloud, the shift to the cloud, right? And, and with that, now uh, we, we, we've looked at a significant rise in the uh, paths to data, right? Remember I've talked about in the previous slide 
uh, uh, bi uh, billions of uh, petabytes of information being produced, right, on a, on, a, on a daily basis and being consumed. But this information, where is it coming from, right? We have different industries that are now uh, uh, key players in terms of uh, data production and, and consumption. We have the banking industry, right? The banking industry that, uh, that consumes majorly a lot of personal information. We have investment industries that also consume a lot of personal information. And especially in the investment industries, these players look to build a portfolio of their of 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 their of the of users in their in their in their portfolio, right? By that I mean um you 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 train the model, you have your risk score, uh you you create a risk score on the basis of let's say how this user has been paying the loans uh, or such or, or such kind of uh, activities. And this is exactly what uh, this um, uh, loan uh, 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 organization do. They create a portfolio that now maps you depending on how, profiles you depending on how you've been repaying your loan, right? That means if you've been defaulting and the machine has been trained to know that this person has been defaulting on, on repaying their loans, then that means automatically you have a very poor uh, as a credit score. And in, in that regard, then definitely uh, your investment chances and chances of you being able to access, uh, let's say, credit uh, 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 services would really go low. So most of this data being produced from the banking, insurance, real estate, healthcare industries are all being consumed in such a way that this data is being accessed to the databases sitting in the backing through applications, right? Remember right now with the um, uh, rise of digital transformation, just like I said, as the main driver or as one of the main drivers that have been causing uh, the huge increase in data, this data is being accessed through the applications, right? We have users accessing the, the core banking system from the front end. We have users accessing insurance platforms from the front end, requesting for information that is now sitting in the back end, right? With the rise of microservices now, we've seen the great rise of APIs, right? Whereby most of the applications nowadays are API-based web applications. Right now, uh, most players are no longer going for the monolithic applications that uh, uh, were being uh, created in the previous era, but rather they are going for a loosely, a loosely coupled services, which have now, which are, 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 are being deployed differently, and they are able to talk to each other through the use of APIs. Right? These application programming interfaces enable communication through the applications to and from even third party uh, uh, APIs, right? Remember most organizations and right now you can even have a, a web application that is solely built on APIs, right? For instance, uh, you are able to consume data from the weather API. Uh, you, 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 you consume this information and run it through a, a model that will now probably give a focus of what the weather information might be in a few days or weeks to come, right? That is done through APIs. Remember, all that is happening here is the transfer of data, right? APIs pick information from the database, communicate this information to the client sitting in the front end, right? So this information that is passing through the APIs as well as the web applications, do we have visibility of what this information is, right? The web application is connecting to the database sitting in the back end, right? Do we have visibility of the kind of payload that these requests give when the request, uh, when, when actually the, the feedback is being given from the server back to the client, right? So with this, we, we've had a, a, a huge increase in terms of the path to data. Right now, there's um, uh, uh, emerging technologies such as containerization, whereby uh, users and uh, organizations have containerized their, their, most of their workloads, right? And this means that this is another, another path to data, right? Imagine if uh, you containerized your database, for instance, in a, in, a, in a Docker container, right? This Docker container, you're, you're orchestrating uh, the Docker containers using, let's say, Kubernetes or OpenShift, right? Then that means that these are different paths that are leading to the database sitting inside the container, right? 
and that and that means in in, in the long run we have a, a, a wide attack surface in terms of um, uh, uh, what malicious actors might be able to uh, uh, go through and access your information sitting in the backend, which now calls for uh, um, uh, improved security, which calls for advanced security and incorporation of uh, 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 new technologies that are now coming into the industry, such as machine learning, and uh, cloud native security solutions uh, such as new vector for container security and such likes of solutions, right? So the path of data has really changed in the recent times compared to what was happening uh, in the previous years when we had monolithic applications. Right now, there are different paths to data by use of APIs. Containers also speak through the APIs, right? One of the main features of Docker containers is the Docker API which now facilitates communication between the Docker containers, right? That is an API that we need visibility into what kind of information is passing through so that now we can uh, actually enforce controls and enforce uh, security uh, controls into ensuring that now we have secured our workloads and any type of service that we have running and sitting in the backend. So having said that, remember um, in the first slide, I talked about the, the major and increase in terms of uh, data production, right? We've had a, a, a huge increase and, and actually an inflation of uh, data that is being produced uh, from our devices and um, uh, users that are now using different kinds of services that have been provisioned by different uh, industry players, right? The huge uh, production of data meant that and also means that this data can no longer be handled within our premise, right? Most organizations do not have capacity to handle the data that they either produce or consume, right? And this is one of the things that now uh, actually have uh, um, uh, formed foundation for the shift to the cloud, right? Major drivers into the shift to the cloud include scalability and, and flexibility, right? Users are looking to take advantage of the cloud and, 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 and take advantage of um, the scalable and very flexible environment that the cloud offers in terms of uh, handling workloads, uh, scaling up, uh, scaling down to save resources, to save, uh, 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 rev to, to, to save costs in terms of uh, operational costs, right? So users are shifting to the cloud and with the huge uh, production of data, users are looking to capitalize on the scalability and flexibility offered in the cloud so that now they can have their workloads running seamlessly and have their users with the best experience. So with that, another thing that um, cloud offers is availability, right? We know of availability zones uh, provided in the cloud. We have different um, uh, uh, data centers. We have different regions down to uh, the availability zones that are now uh, provided by the cloud. All these now ensure that your workloads hosted in the cloud are always available to the users, right? Remember, deploying your, 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 your solution or your application to a single region or to several uh, um, uh, uh, availability zones, right? For AWS, you are able to have that application available to the users, near the users, Remember now, when you, are, when you deploy these applications, you deploy it to the region or the availability zone closest to your users, right? So that now all these users can have a very good and seamless um, user experience and be able to actually get a return for value from, from, from the solution that you're actually offering to them. So another advantage that cloud offers that now has made a huge, a, a huge um, that shift to the cloud is the reliability that the cloud offers. Remember, uh, clouds like AWS and Azure have multiple regions, right? These multiple regions have multiple availability zones sitting within them for redundancy, right? That means that this data sitting here, you, you can be given a service level agreement that this data is available and can be available 99.99% of the time, right? Remember, cloud providers as well as other service providers provide the SLA. And that is one of the things that now customers capitalize on in terms of ensuring that they actually get value for money and value for product and value for 
investing their time into the solution that and services that now these organizations offer. Another major uh, 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 advantage of the cloud is cost efficiency. Remember, now that we are moving from uh, uh, capital expenditure to operational expenditure, right? You are able to only pay for what you use. And with this now, with the pay as you go pricing, you're able to actually pay for only the resources that you use, right? Remember, you, do, you would not need, unlike the previous times when uh, you would need to um, uh, provision a server or you need to uh, uh, acquire a server and probably you get a server that would um, serve for a certain period. For instance, uh, you get a, a, a server with a fixed amount of resources, let's say RAM, storage, and the likes. But once these uh, resources are, are utilized, two aspects of, to it. So there's the underutilization and there's the overutilization of the, of, of the resources. When you underutilize the resources, that means you're not getting value for money, right? You're not very getting value for your investment. And when you underutilize, when you overutilize, you're actually straining your resources, right? Straining your resources means at some point, you might um, uh, get your resources throttled. You might get uh, the traffic probably not, if at all, there's not enough uh, bandwidth to uh, actually handle the throughput that is coming into your application, then actually you're, you're, you're able to go beyond what you can consume, right? And this is now what leads to an outage of services. It leads to um, uh, poor user experience and, and bad reputation that now companies are really trying to avoid so that now they can have their users having the best experience within their platforms. So another uh, major shift to the cloud, another reason uh, that is now uh, pushing the major shift to the cloud is agility, right? Most organizations are looking to take advantage of uh, the agile way of development, right? Remember right now, um, most organizations have moved from the waterfall type of uh, development in terms of the software development life cycle into an agile type of de 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 development, right? It means more, more, more and more applications are being pushed each day. More and more features are being pushed. More and more services are being pushed each day, right? Users don't have to wait for the application to be completely uh, finished before they can actually launch an application, right? Once a feature is developed, the, that feature is launched, then the application can be incrementally built and be incrementally, um, features can be incrementally added into the application, making the application more robust in terms of the features that it handles and what it does. So the agile um, way of development, how cloud comes in is that with the scalability part of it, the scalability aspect of it, you're able to scale and be able to provision any um, environment at any time. You're able to uh, uh, you're able to automate your uh, CI/CD pipelines into the cloud environment and actually handle your 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 your, your deployments uh, in an agile manner. So with these five, have have really um, um, led to a major shift in the cloud, and this is why users are really looking to uh, take. Uh, benefits of these five major advantages that the cloud offers. Now, with, with, with everything that comes with an advantage, then definitely you have to get a disadvantage. Now, this is where the question of cloud security arises, right? We have produced massive information that we cannot consume within our, our, our environments. We, we cannot store, we cannot uh, actually handle. We've chosen to shift to the cloud. Right, because now the cloud provides um, massive storage, massive uh, resources that now we want to capitalize on in terms so that now we can actually make our, we can improve our user experience. We can um, uh, actually give our customers who are accessing our services the best service that they want to get from the front end, right? So with, with this shift to the cloud, storing major, most of the information in the cloud means that the question of the, the aspect of security now comes in, right? When we started, we talked about uh, data being the new oil, right? Malicious actors are always going for the data that is sitting in the, in the, in the databases in the backend. This is what they want, right? And, and if you do some research, a lot of information is being sold in the dark web uh, for, for, 
for very as as, as little as a, a, a few dollars and as much as millions and millions of dollars right it depends with the importance of the data that these users can these malicious actors can actually reach to and can have access to and can actually exfiltrate and be able to use them and for instance ask for rams uh, ransomware and uh, or other kinds of malicious activities that now might cause harm to you or your organization the shift to the cloud mostly uh, comes un uh, under uh, uh, different attack verticals, right? These different attack verticals represent the different entry points from where now malicious actors can be able to access this data that is sitting in the cloud, right? So what, what, what happens to the attack verticals? We have the infrastructure, that is the cloud. We have the people, that is the users. And we have the process that is the business logic that now we are looking to push for the users to have an experience from the front end right so these attack verticals have really increased with the increase in data that now we have in our in our in our in, in our in our environments right infrastructure we have the networks we have the servers right the networks, uh, uh, applications communicate through ports, right? We have people, right? We have um, uh, weak credentials. We have certain kinds of, of, of um, uh, 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 identity and access management, right? For the processes, we have the business logic, right? We have improper business logic that now end up probably exposing too much information that they should, right? So these different attack verticals are really, uh, uh, increase the rate at which malicious actors now want to attack the cloud environment because most information is actually sitting in the cloud now how the cloud security works i am sure um, as most of you understand we have the shared responsibility model in the cloud right we have the security of the cloud versus the security in the cloud right when 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 actually you begin uh, learning anything about cloud you'll be told that security of the cloud is actually a, a, a mandate of the service provider, security of the cloud, right? They protect the cloud infrastructure. That is the servers sitting in the data centers. But now security in the cloud, right? You are the user in the cloud. Your organization is running their workloads in the cloud. And this is solely your responsibility, right? So you, you, you need to take necessary measures and precautions Sorry, probably someone needs to wait. Yeah, Adeline probably could help me mute someone. Thanks. Yeah, so just, just like I was saying. Kindly, kindly mute, kindly mute yourselves. Thank you. Yeah, so just like I was saying, the security model, how it works in the cloud, we have the shared uh, security model, responsibility model. That is the security of the cloud versus security in the cloud, right? And, and with that, it's, it really takes more of self-initiative to protect your data sitting in the cloud. Remember, AWS will protect only their, their infrastructure, right? They will cater for physical security of the data centers. They will cater for security of the servers, right? But now you go into the cloud environment and provision a, 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 a virtual machine, an EC2 instance, right? Or you run your workloads, let's say in an RDS uh, database, you will need to protect this uh, workload that you're actually running in the, in, in, in the cloud, right? And that is where the shared responsibility model of the cloud comes in, right? So a, the information that is sitting in, in, in the cloud environment, it is our sole responsibility to protect that information as compared to the security of the cloud, which is now solely the responsibility of the service provider, in our case, AWS, who are supposed to provide that security. And, and, and with that, um, we now, as much as we look at cloud security, in real sense, we are looking at data security, right? Because data is the ultimate, is the ultimate um, uh, 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 go-to 
uh, let, 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 let me just call it, is, is the ultimate um, target, right? Malicious actors are looking to get to the data setting in the backend, right? This data is our new oil, just like I was mentioning earlier. Actors, once they get access to this information, they are able to do different kinds of activities with your information. Remember the likes of brute force attacks, right? They use uh, passwords that have now been collected from uh, different users uh, existing in different databases. And as we speak right now, more than 2,200 attacks, cyber attacks takes place per day, right? This, this is a, a, an, in, a, an increasing and alarming number because one, we, we talked about the increased attack surface. We talked about um, uh, 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 drivers of uh, that are leading now to the increased attack surface, such as digital transformation that have now uh, pushed for adoption of uh, the likes of microservices that now have led to an expansion in our environments. These have led to a huge increase in terms of the cyber attacks that take place per day. And statistics shows that we have 2, 000, more than 2,200 attacks taking place in a single day, right? This translates to about 39, uh, 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 39 attacks taking place in a minute, right? That, that, that is not a small number. If, 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 if you think of it and think of the cost of a cloud data breach, right? In 2023, the cost of a cloud data breach has, has, has been established to be more than 5 million US dollars, right? This is not a small amount of money. Uh, when when, when uh, compliance and, and, and regulatory bodies find um, um, industry uh, lawbreakers, people who've, who've not complied with industry standards, right? They are fined huge fines, right? And if you do some research, you look at the likes of uh, big companies like Google, uh, AWS, uh, the lawsuits that they have in terms of uh, data security, uh, data breaches, and data lawsuits in general, you will find that they are really uh, amounting to uh, millions and millions of dollars that now, if at all, they were to be led to um, uh, 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 actually take uh, precedence, right, will be able to really use lose a huge amount of uh, uh, revenue going to uh, data loss and data, and, and, and data breaches. So as, as you can see, uh, instances of data breaches, we've had huge companies, right? We've had the, 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 the likes of uh, Facebook, we've had uh, the likes of uh, LinkedIn, Accenture, uh, Sony, uh, just to mention a few, that have now been hit by uh, attacks over different times, right? In 2019, uh, Facebook lost about 530 million user records, right? These user records were displayed in the dark web, but uh, Facebook kept it low profile and chose not to alert. But at the end, they still came back and told their users this is what had happened. Uh, there was a data breach, but now it has been contained. The same happened to LinkedIn, right? 6.5 million users. And not just this. This, 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 this we, we had an attack of about 700 million users' uh, information being lost from LinkedIn, right? This was, that was in 2021. So if, if, if you do your research, you'll find that it does not matter whether an organization is big or small, whether you are an individual person or an organization. You, you, all of us are prone to um, uh, attacks, right? In, in, our, in our country, Kenya, we, 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 we had the Naivas attack just the other day, right? 110 million user records were lost, right? And actually the cost of this, uh, uh, when Naivas was fined by, uh, uh, the, the, the Office of the Data Protection Commission, this, uh, uh, they were given the maximum fine uh, by, by, that had been proposed by uh, uh, the Data Protection Act, that is 5 million shillings, right? So if, 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 if you look at this, then you can get the clear picture that the cost of a data breach is really huge, right? So how confident are you about your safety of, 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 of the data that you store in the cloud, right? The, that confidence is, is, is all built by strategies, by practices, right? So that now you increase the risk score from a low risk score, uh, uh, from poorly misconfigured cloud environments, and now put best practices and strategies that now will ensure that the data that you have sitting in the cloud environment is protected ultimately and at all costs. So, We've, 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 we've looked at the, the data breaches that have taken place. We've looked at the different statistics. We now want to understand what are the major causes, right? 
who are the major players in terms of causing the uh, um, uh, the data breaches, right? The first and uh, the, the 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 highest uh, statistic that now co has the cause is the weak or stolen credentials, right? This has been the major cause of uh, uh, data breaches. Attackers uh, probably you're spoofed uh, with with a phishing email. You end up uh, clicking on 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 some malicious uh, software, or uh, uh, you're, you're, you're prompted to change your password uh, and without checking uh, the, the actual origin of that uh, request, you, you go ahead and change your password, right? A user, a, a, a malicious hacker probably sends you a link or you need to reset your, your password, right? Uh, without confirming much, you just click on the link, it takes you to a login page, and prompts you to, ch to change your password, right? The first thing you do is key in your original password. Once you key in that original password, that user has already gotten access to, 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 to your password, right? And that means technically they can take over your accounts for the different passwords that they have now uh, uh, have acquired, right? So that means that we really need to take care of passwords, right? We, we need to put necessary controls in terms of um, uh, password management. We need to uh, incorporate the use of password managers in terms of um, uh, uh, storing our passwords and actually credentials that now even applications sometimes use to connect to other services such, such as the databases sitting in the back end, right? So another major cause of, of data breaches is malware and ransomware attacks, right? This is actually uh, more self-explanatory Malware comes in different forms. We have uh, phishing attacks. We have uh, 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 more targeted spear phishing attacks, right? We have uh, uh, different uh, malware. That is the malicious software that now users might, you, you might click on a link. We have uh, uh, adware right now. You click on an advertisement somewhere posted on a page. And actually that ad advertisement contains malicious codes in, in, in the, in embedded within the, um, uh, embedded inside the advertisement. And with that, you are, you are hooked, right? The, 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 the malicious actor is able to gain access. For instance, you click on an ad, it downloads a malware, uh, a subcode that probably is running inside your, your PC or, uh, or your environment, and they're able to run uh, remote commands and, and scripts inside your PC and extract and infiltrate information. So weak, weak and stolen passwords and uh, malware and ransomware attacks form uh, a, a huge uh, percentage of what causes these data breaches. Another major cause is human error and insider threats, right? Human error comes in the form of, um, for instance, uh, 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 you, you've forgotten or you've used, this actually ties up with the weak credentials, right? You've used your credential, let's say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Most of these passwords, when once they are keyed into the systems, they are actually hashed, right? So that what is actually being passed in the backend is the hash value of this password. And these hash values are, are normally the same, right? And this is what these malicious actors reverse engineer into getting that common password. So if they have an if they have a a, a, a hash that probably follows a specific pattern then definitely that hash will translate to a specific password once that hash is, is, is actually re decrypted into the original password. So human error, this has been one of the major players of, of, of data breaches and actually looking into it, proper strategies and controls need to be put in place so that now we ensure that we have mitigated most human errors and insider threats that now might lead to uh, actually data breaches in our environment. So another, another uh, main cause of data breaches is lack of patching and updates, right? You find that what you, 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 you are running a system, uh, probably you've never patched uh, your, your, your PC for quite a while. Updates are sent to your PC. Remember for the Windows, um, unlike the Linux environment where you can do a one-time update, a YAM update or uh, for Windows, you actually have Windows pushes those updates to your PC, right? So that now, I'm, I'm sure as most of you get these this updates, you're given a, a notification. And once you go to the software updates, 
probably it runs the up, uh, update and tells you to restart the PC. So these are critical, these are really critical um, operations that we need to take into place. We need to ensure that we co pass, constantly patch and update the, 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 the software so that now we ensure that if at all any vulnerability or any exploit had been, ex uh, uh, had been experienced uh, in the previous uh, version, right? Updating this version and patching that version into an, a, a later patch will actually uh, uh, block these um, uh, uh, vulnerabilities from actually uh, uh, prol prol proliferating into your environment. So the last uh, but not least cause of data breaches is third party risks, right? Remember we have third party uh, vendors and contractors uh, connecting to different environments, right? Right now, different APIs are being used to collect, to collect information from different uh, organizations, right? Do you know if this organization has enforced controls, security controls in their organization? Probably not, right? You're not sure if that API that you're, you're using to, to, to fetch information from another organization, probably if, if at all it has any type of protection sitting um, uh, uh, across it, right? Do you know if that information that is coming, if at all it, it is encrypted or that information might be actually in, intercepted uh, 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 and actually malicious actors might even plant malicious code inside there and end up actually causing harm and damage to you and the organization, right? So third party risks also really play a major role in terms of um, uh, 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 causing the, the data breaches. But having said that, what do we need to do in terms of ensuring that now we, we get the, the best out of the cloud environment in terms of security, right? So some of the best uh, practices and strategies that now we are looking to enforce to ensure that now we lock out these malicious actors and we ensure that we have enforced security controls in our environments, in our cloud environments, are some are, are, are the following. So this, this, this is not, uh, uh, um, uh, it's comprehensive, but uh, it's not, uh, we, when you say last but not least, then that means we have more strategies and practices that now we can add on to this and, 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 and ensure that now we've increased and improved our security posture in the cloud. So the first uh, uh, best practice and strategy that you, you would want to put in place is data classification and risk assessment, right? We are looking to know where this data is, right? We need to analyze the risk of the, the data loss if at all anything takes place, right? We also need to enforce strong identity access and management, right? Identity and access management means that users the user process is, 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 is actually automated, right? From the joiner uh, to the lever, right? You're able to have a centralized security controls in terms of user management, and you're able to know if this user is actually within the organization or this user has left, then you're able to apply uh, appropriate controls to ensure that this user has or does not have access to the environment. So we you also have encryption, which is very key. Remember right now, uh, Technically, no organization can accept an, uh, uh, an encrypted data, right? Most uh, traffic right now follows the HTTP, HTTPS uh, uh, protocol, uh, with HTTP being locked out because of insecurity, right? We need to enforce controls, right? SSL certificates um, uh, incorporates uh, TLS, uh, latest versions, uh, TLS 1.3 and the likes. We also need to enforce a DLP, right? Data loss prevention. This is actually key and central to data security, right? We need to know where this sensitive data is, right? And with that, prevent the loss of this information, whichever way the data might be lost by monitoring uh, the network traffic, monitoring file access and, and, and transfers and actually enforcing policies that now will ensure we actually have a, a, enough controls to ensure we prevent data loss. So another proper um, a strategy and practice is continuous monitoring and incident response. And as a best practice for this is to incorporate a logger, right? Such as uh, a SIEM solution, which is the uh, security information and event management solution. Incorporating a SIEM will give you an end-to-end -end, um, visibility into what logs are being produced in your environment, right? 
With visibility, then that means you can enforce governance, right? With governance means you can enforce controls. And with that now, you are able to mitigate um, uh, uh, inappropriate data access and uh, 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 privileged operations uh, that now that have been escalated beyond permissions that they should have. Another proper practice is regular patching and updates. We've seen that as a major cause of, of, of data loss and data breaches. So it is best practice to always patch regularly and update the software that we use to the latest patches, right? As, 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 as a last resort, and actually something that now should be taken up is the training and user awareness, right? We, we, need, we need to make ourselves aware. We need to uh, uh, evangelize the, 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 the importance of, of data security, right? We need to evangelize uh, how these malicious actors come into our tax surface, right? We need to understand this, the phishing attacks. We need to do phishing uh, simulations to, to our users so that now from this, we can have a report in terms of knowing who passed the phishing at, um, at simulation, who failed, and now what followed action can we take in terms of ensuring that this user who failed cannot fail any, any time again once we do the simulation, or if at all, it's a real attack that is coming from a malicious actor. So just to look at each and every of these practice uh, one by one, the data classification and risk assessments most with the, with the exponential growth of data, right, we've had the shift to the cloud, right? Remember, a lot of information is being produced and no, not all data is equal, right? We have PII, which is the personally identifiable information. And we have just regular information that probably a malicious actor would not want uh, or would not have any use for, right? But as I, again, as I say, there is no data that is not important. All data, all data is important. Even, even that which you think probably that, that does not fall into the PII uh, uh, category, that data is still, is still information because most of them are produced by these devices. There are metrics, uh, there are logs uh, that are being produced from these systems. Now, we need to understand where, what data we have sitting in our databases, right? We need to discover what data we have. And after discovering, we need to classify, right? We need to classify what information we have so that now we ensure we've enforced necessary controls to ensure that we have established industry uh, compliance, uh, we have enforced proper security controls. And with that, now we are able to identify, analyze, and evaluate this data, right? Through these approaches, methodologies, and processes that now we've put in place, we'll be able to identify, analyze, and evaluate this data, if at all any risk, we have any risk if this data is accessed or there's a data breach that is actually experienced within our environment. So data classification and risk assessment is key. And as a, as a best practice, it is important to incorporate um, discovery and, and risk assessment solutions that now will be able to um, centrally manage this information that is sitting in your backend, right? That solution should be able to go into your backend, discover services within your uh, data repositories within your network, go into those data repositories, discover that data that is sitting within those repositories, classify this information, you know, and, and at the end, tell you what type of information so that now you can apply appropriate controls and ensure that you are compliant and you've ensured security to the data that now you have sitting in your backend. Some of this for, for AWS, we have AWS Massey, AWS Massey, which now um, um, classifies this information that you have in your cloud environment. And if you want to go for cloud neutral environments, you could go for the Empower Database Activity Monitoring tool that will now give you a, a clear overview of the information that you have sitting in your backend and discover for you any services within your network and classify for you this information and apply appropriate controls so that you ensure you're conforming to industry's best practices. So the second best practice was to enforce strong identity and access management. Remember, most of these solutions are policy-based solutions, right? You can enforce a policy within your organizations to ensure that probably a, a password conforms to a specific pattern. A password must have a capital letter or a, a foreign um, a symbol, or a, a password cannot have three followed letters or, or numbers, you know, such kinds of policies that now 
will ensure that I, in the long run, whichever password a user uses to choose has conformed to a specific policy and a specific pattern that now is, is, has been hardened and ensured that the password is actually a strong password. Another key um, uh, importance to, uh, uh, aspect to incorporate is multi-factor authentication, right? What you have, what you know versus uh, 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 so who you are, what you have, and what you know, right? What you know is your password, right? Who you are is a feature that you have probably could be your, your facial or could be your eyes uh, and, and what you have is a device, right? Could be your phone, could be uh, uh, any your email. So that now once you authenticate into a, a, a platform, they're able to send for you, for instance, um, a, 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 a one-time pin that you're able to key in and now get access into this, into, 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 the, source, into, into the application, right? We have privilege access management. Do we know what our privileged users are doing, right? And for this, we really have to enforce granular access controls. We have to enforce just in time access, right? Just in time access comes in the form whereby at that time when the user only needs to use the service, that is the time when they are given access, right? And this really, uh, as, as opposed to a privileged user uh, uh, having, having um, uh, access permissions throughout the time, right? And if at all this user is compromised and a malicious actor is able to take over the account with the privileged accounts, then you can imagine the kind of damage that they can do to your environment, right? So it is really important to enforce granular access controls, just in time access controls and session monitoring so that now you, you ensure that you're able to have visibility into what these privileged users are actually doing. Some of the ways to actually do this and best practices is actually enforcing a centralized identity provider, right? Centralized identity providers include Active Directory, AWS, Identity and Access Management, right? You're able to enforce the likes of SAML and OAuth that now will give you the leeway to be able to enforce uh, and to be able to take advantage of single sign-on and use a single set of credentials across different types of applications, right? So with this, you're able to really uh, have a strong identity and access management solution. And if at all you want to go for uh, vendor, neutral, um, vendor cloud neutral uh, vendors, the likes of uh, Cybac and, and, and um, uh, Delinea, they offer privileged access management with just-in-time session monitoring and granular access controls that will now give you that, uh, improve that security posture in terms of identity and access management. So another best practice to look at is encryption, right? When it comes to encryption, we talk of uh, symmetric versus asymmetric encryption. Remember symmetric encryption, uh, here uh, we look at the, the, the key that has been used to encrypt the data is the same key that will be used to decrypt that data. Unlike asymmetric encryption, the likes of uh, Defi Hellman uh, uh, that use now asymmetric type of uh, 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 handshake, right? The, the, the key that you use to encrypt the data is not the same key that you will use to decrypt the data, right? So in, in, in cooperation of HSM, that is the hardware security modules, right? Incorporating the likes of um, uh, Thales and, and other industry players that now offer such solutions really in, in improve your security posture. So there's the, the aspect of uh, encrypting data at rest and data in transit. So as at this year, and in my knowledge, I'm aware that AWS right now actually encrypts data at rest and data in transit, right? And also um, uh, uh, other clouds, uh, other cloud providers. Okay, so. Uh, they have really taken advantage of the likes of server-side encryption and client-side encryption with the use of uh, AWS uh, key management um, systems that now will be able to store those keys for you, be able to manage those keys for you in terms of key rotation and other kinds of activities that will now ensure that your keys are stored safely, your, your encryption uh, is, is, is top-notch and your data that is either in transit or, or, or sitting in the backend is actually protected at all times. So as, as, as a practice, it is important to always enforce data loss prevention, right? DLP is the monitoring and preventing of an authorized uh, data transmission, right? This uh, data transmission uh, comes in different aspects. We have network traffic, different data flows, and user activities, right? Now, how you monitor and prevent this is using deep packet inspection. This now deep packet inspection, uh, packet inspection is what 
was normally used by common firewalls uh, in the existing, uh, but now deep packet inspection has added an advanced layer of security in terms of a packet inspection to ensure that no packet is actually missed in during the inspection uh, uh, period. So we have content analysis, looking at what content you actually stored in, in those files. We have behavioral analytics that now builds a profile of common activities that take place in your organization and uses advanced machine learning to be able to baseline your, your, your organization and actually build a profile into what can, you, you can actually uh, enforce controls on so that if at all anything happens apart out of the profile, then you get notified and you can go ahead and take necessary uh, measures in terms of prevention. So we have policy-based uh, controls in uh, data loss prevention. So these are content-based, context-based, and user-based policies, right? These are different policies that now will really uh, help you in terms of solidifying and uh, increasing your security posture in your organization, right? Ensuring that you've integrated your DLP solutions with other security controls, such as identity and access management, right? You're able to see, you're able to enforce role-based access control, that is VBAC, right? So that's now, if this user only accesses this information, right, then you can, be, you can even enforce that these users, particular users cannot access a, a specific file or cannot access a specific folder, right? That is now incorporating uh, uh, other solutions together with the DLP so that as a whole, you're able to now build that security posture and actually improve the security of the data that is sitting in, in, in a cloud environment. So, uh, we have continuous monitoring and incidents response. And for this, it is really critical that you gain visibility into what is happening within your network and within your environment, right? You need to look at the network traffic. You need to look at the system logs and metrics. You need to look at user activities, right? What are these users doing in, in your environment? You need to look at access control mechanisms, right? We've talked of enforcing strong identity and access management so, uh, uh, controls, right? So these are really critical in terms of establishing a visibility into what is actually happening in your environment. So as a best practice, it is critical that you incorporate um, a, a, a SIEM solution, that is a security information and event management, right? Or, 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 or you have a, an intrusion detection system, right? Or you have an, a, an intrusion prevention system, uh, system, that is the IDP, right? So this, these are really critical. And when you come to AWS, then, you can in, uh, incorporate AWS CloudWatch, right? To collect all the metrics, logs, and traces and give you in, an intuitive dashboard, uh, just like uh, uh, AWS uh, uh, CloudWatch does. AWS um, um, CloudTrail also will collect the logs for you and give you a clear picture in terms of metrics and logs into what is happening in, 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 your, in your organization or in your environment, in terms of resources, the amount of CPU being used, the amount of RAM, right? You're able to see the storage uh, uh, metrics and now take necessary measures in terms of ensuring that now proper controls are in place. You are always monitoring your environment. And if at all anything happens, then you have proper response uh, controls and procedures that now you can put in place and ensure that now you've protected your environment. So uh, we've we talked of, we talked about uh, regular patching and updates. Uh, that was a major player in terms of the cause of data breaches. But now, as a best practice, you have to ensure that now you uh, incorporate patch management right procedures. Patch management procedures can either be manual or automated. Right, we have patch management solutions in the industry. AWS has AWS uh, Systems Manager that now. Uh, uh, will be able to help you in terms of how you manage, uh, how you patch uh, uh, applications and other types of services that are now sitting within your cloud environment. So incorporate patch management solution as a best practice, okay? And then another best practice would be to look at the common vulnerabilities and exposures system or the national vulnerability database. These are now what, the, what actually um, store these CVEs that have been identified by industry players such as NIST, uh, CIS, uh, 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 CISA, other industry players that have identified these CVEs and have posted them in the common vulnerability and exposures database. So you need to have an updated uh, visibility into what is actually happening and ensure that you have updated your environment properly so that now these vulnerabilities cannot take advantage and, 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 and actually cause malicious damage to your environment. 
So last but not least, this is in regard to human errors, right? We have to incorporate as a best practice training and awareness, right? We have to tell users about social engineering attacks, phishing threats. We have to use manual versus automated solutions, right? We have uh, the likes of no before, we have uh, other solutions that now provide security awareness uh, on the go, right? You don't need to organize for a session to do a, 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 a phishing or a security awareness campaign, right? You, you can have your users enrolled in a system, uh, go through a course and actually take an, a test at the end of the course. And this test will now give a risk score in terms of who is actually, uh, how you're doing in terms of the security posture and what you need to actually do in terms of ensuring that your users are aware what is happening within uh, the, the, the security industry. So it is key to, to reinforce our security culture. That is the information security and management uh, systems. ISMS is really key. And that is one of the things that auditors look for. You need to ensure that there's good collaboration between IT and security teams, right? Because IT might do their own things. Probably uh, if there's a new API that has been uh, published, right? This API, uh, probably that's the, the swagger file for this API has not been given to the security team to upload to the API security solution that they have, right? So you see the two, dis the disparity between the AIT and security teams will mean that there'll be a huge gap because running an old uh, swagger file will mean that probably there's a new interface and uh, API endpoint that has been published by the, by the developers in the new swagger file. But now, now that you're not aware about it as a security team, then malicious actors can scan. And once they find that unprotected uh, endpoint, then they're able to take advantage of it and exploit your environment and actually infiltrate information that these APIs have access to. So it is really critical that users are trained. Uh, they are made aware of actually what is happening in the cyberspace of industry best practices and what to actually do in any case of any event you come across an attack or uh, a such kind of uh, activities. So having said that, uh, I, will, I will bring us to a conclusion. Um, uh, we've looked at the history of growth in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the amount of data that we actually have. We've looked at the exponential increase in the data. We've looked at the increased uh, parts to data and what has really uh, the increased uh, uh, exponential growth of data that has now led to the shift in the cloud and also the different advantages that the cloud provides. We've looked at cloud security and how uh, to actually, what it takes, we've looked at the different statistics in terms of cost of data breaches. And now we've looked at securing the data in the cloud, right? The best practices that we've now uh, just uh, taken a look at, uh, including uh, data classification and risk assessment, strong identity and access management, encryption, DLP, continuous monitoring, incorporating the same solutions and IDPs, right? Regular patching and updates, training and, and awareness. These form the core best practices that now and strategies that we need to incorporate in our cloud environment to ensure that our data sitting in the backing is protected from malicious actors at all times. So once again, data is the new oil. Yeah, and cloud security is the new oil, right? Because with the increase in exponential uh, uh, amount of data that is being produced, then that means there is really huge need for cloud security, right? All that data needs sitting in the cloud will need to be protected. Then that means taking advantage of that is actually uh, setting your foot on top of an oil rig, in, 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 in literally, literally. So uh, let's take advantage of uh, the shift to the cloud uh, and actually enforce proper controls and security measures to ensure that our environments um, are, are, are tight and are solid from malicious actors who might want to get access uh, to the data that is sitting in the market. So with that, uh, I thank you so much. Uh, I, I compiled a list of um, solutions that are now you can incorporate uh, from AWS as well as um, uh, 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 cloud neutral uh, uh, vendors that now uh, provide solutions that will help you enforce these best practices in your environment. And if, 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 if just uh, allow me to just share it for a second, let me see.
or, or if at all anyone has any question then then feel free as well to just yeah So can you let me know when you can see my screen? So we have AWS we provided. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Adeline. So we have AWS provided services that I compiled. In term, when you want to enforce data classification, we have Amazon Mercy, we have AWS Security Hub that now provide different um, uh, AI-powered uh, ways to discover and classify and protect this sensitive information in the backer. For identity and access management, we have AWS IAM, we have AWS SSO. For encryption, we have AWS Key Management Service. We have AWS Certificate Manager. For DLP, we have Amazon Mercy once again for uh, classifying and discovering and protecting this sensitive information that we actually have in the backend. Monitoring and incidents response, we have CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and Guard Duty that now you can incorporate in your cloud environment to ensure that you have a solid uh, data security uh, uh, control measures and procedures. Patch management, we have AWS Systems Manager. For training and awareness, AWS offers uh, blogs, white papers, and from the AWS training and certification, you can be able to learn a lot about the cloud and really enforce proper security controls. For privilege access management, we have AWS IAM and AWS Secrets Manager for storing secrets that now probably credentials that applications might be using, API keys, and such likes of uh, information that we might want to store in the environment. So for cloud neutral solutions, I compiled uh, um, a list of uh, solutions that now are, are cloud neutral, but actually support deployment in the cloud, including AWS. The likes of Impava for uh, 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 data classification and risk assessment, right? You can deploy Impava in the cloud, right? And protect uh, uh, workloads in the cloud, right? So there's a really robust list here for, for data classification, identity and access monitoring, Patch management, encryption, down to training awareness, human access management, to look at the likes of cyber, right? And this really form a um, broad uh, perspective. If you look at it, if you're looking to break into, if you're actually looking to break into cyber, into, into the cyber space, right now there's a huge shortage of uh, cyber engineers, right? Huge shortage of uh, engineers that can handle these solutions. And remember, these are the solutions sitting in the customer environments, right? The cyber acts in power, Splunk, Axite. Uh, so taking advantage of this, we can just go ahead and learn a solution. And within no time, just give yourself a, a couple of months, master a solution, and you'll be able to really do great when it comes to the industry. So um, jumping, I'm jumping into the charts, I can see uh, there are a few questions. So, um, we have one question from Noble uh, who's asking, how easy is it to get a job as a cloud security engineer? And what are some of the best certifications that can boost your employability? Sure, sure. So for this, the best, the, how easy is it to get a job as a cloud security engineer? Remember, I, I, I always say it all, it all boils down to commitment, right? You, you choose to commit yourself for a period, let's say six months or so, or three months, and you put, you, you, you give it your all, right? And you, 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 tell, you say to yourself that you want to become a cloud security engineer, then I believe then nothing can stop you. So how is it easy is it to get that cloud security engineer role? I can tell you it is as easy as your will, right? If you're willing, to get it, then you will get it. Then some of the best certifications to have, remember certifications uh, um, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, provide uh, um, uh, uh, a clear picture of what skills you have, right? Remember, I, I, I can be a Linux systems admin, right? But now if I come with two profiles, one profile has, for instance, 
uh, uh, or, 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 or let me just put it like the, uh, I can be a cloud security engineer with uh, uh, with skills that I actually possess. But now there's a different profile that comes and it has a certification for an AWS cloud security specialist, right? Here is one without the profile. And here is another one with the certification, right? So definitely you go with one that has proven uh, that they actually have these um, skills, right? And they show that through the certification. So there are different industry certifications that you can take advantage of all the way from CompTIA uh, to, to, to if, if, if at all you're into penetration testing, you can look at uh, uh, ethical hacking, right? Penetration testing, you can go and look at the likes of, uh, for, now for advanced guys, you can look at um, uh, the likes of uh, 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 OSCP, right? This, this will give you an edge in terms, of, and, and I can assure you that once you have this mastered, then you, can, you are on the road into securing your next uh, cloud security role. So can you share the resources presentation and the document? Yes, definitely, I will, I will share. So let me see where I can share them right now. So probably, let me just uh, paste them in the, in, the, in the chat. Probably I think it should, it should work. Yeah, let me, let me, sure, let me drop here. Grab it. Yeah, I'm just attaching the. So with that, I think I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, let, me, let, me, let me attach the files. Uh, thank you so much, Mike, for the insightful uh, session. I've, I actually have learned a lot the best practices of AWS uh, security, including encryption, the training and awareness, and uh, data loss prevention. Yeah. So, guys, uh, I've shared a link. You can register. It's for attendance, and it will help us with keeping the records. And also, you can download the the materials that Mike has shared on the chat. And in case of anything, Mike, you can also share your LinkedIn profile. People can connect with you. Let's check it out. So guys, remember just like I said, you can really take advantage of that list that I've shared and really make a lot out of yourself. Right now, industry leaders are looking for, for guys who can actually administer those solutions, right? So it's, it is really upon you. It's, it's, if you just take it upon yourself, just learn a solution or two. Or in, in the specific niche, if you are looking to go into data security, if you're looking to go into identity and access management, if you're looking to go into data loss prevention, web application security, be it any, any, any the, the, the different, vectors and verticals that cybersecurity provides, right? You can really take advantage of those solutions, master that solution, and it will really go a long way in terms of providing your next career, career job, which will really, uh, you, you'll, you'll really appreciate it. So take, take your time, um, take your time, go through the solutions. So recommended solutions, um, uh, take it from the list, I've just shared, top 10, those are actually top 10 of the solutions as recommended by industry leaders, right? So they actually appear in hierarchy. And some of the industry leaders that have proposed that include Gartner, the likes of Forrester Wave, that now do analytics on the usage of those solutions, the ease of usage, and the 
completeness of the solution so that now they rank those solutions and and and, and give them uh, uh, the best or or uh, the second best visionary or challengers or actually champions in, in in their different fields so just take a look at that list that i've provided uh grab your niche yeah if it is identity and security if it is uh, data loss prevention database security grab your niche yeah you go a long way and it will go a long way towards providing your next career job thanks guys for joining and thanks for listening to me i look forward to more uh, opportunities to speak to you once again thank you all thank you mike for accepting our invite it was a short notice and we really appreciate your effort and your time for investing in us and uh, giving us the nuggets about the aws cloud security it was a wow for me and i really appreciate and i wish you guys uh, all the best and uh, i think it's a uh, time we can put on our cameras we take one or two screenshots for the purpose of um, connecting with the others i'm waiting apologies i won't be i'm not in a position to turn on my video today <laughs> So I'm waiting for everyone. Amasi, Emmanuel, Lewis, Mildred. Mike, you can also take some from your end. Okay. So thank you guys for your time and for joining in in our session today. And uh, I wish you all the best and uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Mike and everyone. Thank you all. See you soon.